Oftentimes, HIV positive people are arrested for having sex with others and not disclosing their status. In fact, people with HIV can be put in prison for up to 25 years for non-disclosure to a sex partner. In this video, we're going to determine if laws that imprison HIV positive people accused of spreading the virus are right or wrong, just or unjust. After taking a deeper look at the history of HIV disclosure laws in America, the latest scientific info on HIV, and the ethics of sexual consent while being HIV positive. Researchers complain that very little money has been spent nationwide to understand it or to combat it. One reason for that, they believe, is that the primary at-risk population is gay men who don't carry a lot of political clout. This epidemic is not going to remain localized in any one group. Epidemics affect people. We need funding to stimulate research to find the cause of this new disease. Back in the 80s, the response to AIDS was piss poor. No infrastructure was created to combat the crisis. Politicians refused to pour money into research for treatments, while hospitals around the nation remained crippled by the virus. As a result, millions of people around the world died from AIDS. In a panic to combat the spread of AIDS, elected US officials implemented court-ordered criminal punishments against AIDS patients to address this very public health concern. As a matter of fact, the first law which called for the arrest and incarceration of AIDS patients was passed by Florida in 1986. A little later in this video, you'll find out how this legislation has affected marginalized groups like black women and black gay men and black people in general. Charlie Sheen's ex-girlfriend Brie Olsen says she's furious with Sheen after his TV confession that he is HIV positive. I'm here to, to admit that I am in fact uh, HIV positive. I could be dead right now. I could literally be dead right now because he didn't tell me that. He says he found out when him and I were together. I was living in his house. There is no one he could have trusted more to confide this information in than to me. Why do you think he didn't? I don't think he cared. Why are black folks and gay folks put in prison after violating HIV disclosure laws while a straight white man with money walks around free after he's violated the same exact laws? According to the CDC, black Americans make up almost half of all new HIV cases, even though black folks only make up about 13% of the entire US population. The numbers don't lie. Non-disclosure laws target black folks who make up the majority of all new HIV cases. Looking deeper into the data, black gay men are most likely to be imprisoned by HIV laws within the gay community. Black women are most likely to be thrown in jail behind HIV laws among all races of women, while straight black men are most likely to be jailed by HIV laws among all races of straight men. In a few moments, we'll discuss how breakthroughs in medical science have exposed the shortcomings of HIV disclosure laws, yet most influencers and leaders have been radio silent about these shortcomings. Would that be the case if these laws primarily affected folks who were straight and white? But so long as it's kept dormant with drugs, HIV remains undetectable. And when HIV is undetectable, it's untransmittable too. In theory, this means that by testing everyone who's at risk of HIV and treating those who test positive, we could stop transmission and eventually eradicate HIV. Medications for HIV treatment did not exist in 1986 when disclosure laws were first passed. Nowadays, medications make it virtually impossible for a person with the virus to infect people who are HIV negative. Medicines like Vic Tarvi have also increased the average life expectancy of Americans with HIV to 79 years old. Yet, our current non-disclosure laws have not been revised since they were first created over 30 years ago when scientists, healthcare professionals, and lawmakers literally knew nothing about HIV. Should laws created from a place of extreme ignorance continue to be legitimized and given the authority to imprison HIV positive people? people accused of violating them. Does that sound right to you? What's right and what's wrong? A law, you know, something is against the law, then it's telling society that that is unacceptable, that's bad behavior. And I think the severity of that punishment tells you how bad you are as a person. You know, you're a class B felon, lifetime sex offender. You are a very, very, very bad person. You did a very, very, very bad thing. I end up having unprotected sex with a soldier in the military. 
did not know how to tell him that I was HIV positive at the time because I, I was afraid of how he was going to look at me. I was afraid that how he would judge me. And, and um, the only thing I could say is you, you need to get a condom. Would it even be right for an HIV negative person to call the cops and file charges against somebody who hid their HIV status from them when we all know the risk that come along with unprotected sex? HIV negative people can be proactive and protect themselves from contracting the virus by using condoms and taking preventative medicines like the SCOVI, especially if you're in a high risk group like black women and black gay men. Or HIV positive people who choose not to disclose their status, sex offenders, criminals, and liars who violate others without consent? Or could it be that HIV negative people who don't take precautions against contracting the virus are just plain old arrogant and irresponsible? Are current HIV disclosure laws good as is? Or do they need to be reformed?